discuss about the marketing research and then we'll discuss about stp that is segmentation targeting and positioning right uh, what is marketing environment right according to philip kotler a company's market marketing environment consists of the internal factors and forces which affect the company's ability to develop and maintain a successful transaction and relationship within the company's target customer so according to philip uh, philip kotler the father of marketing according to him uh, this uh, marketing environment consists of the internal factors which impact and develop the uh, successful transactions and relationship with customers target customers but according to pride and ferrer marketing environment consists of external forces that directly or indirectly influences the organization's acquisitions of input and generation of output so according to kotler it is the internal environment which impacts the uh, uh, it is internal environment uh, which impacts the production or uh, the marketing process of the organization and according to pride and ferrer it is the external forces that directly or indirectly influences the organization acquisition of input and generation of output so uh, in short both external forces and internal forces plays an important role and internal forces and external forces constitutes the marketing environment what are these external and in internal forces external forces external forces are those forces which are not in control of market uh, of the uh, organization they are beyond the control of organization and they and these external forces are called the macro environment of the marketing they consist of the macro environment and it is beyond the control of organization while internal organization or in sorry internal forces are those forces which are in control of the organization right and they are known as the micro environment of the marketing let us first discuss the external forces right macro environment of the marketing macro environment of marketing uh, includes the demographic factors economic factors socio cultural factors natural factors technological factors and political legal factors all these factors impact the marketing process of any organization it impacts the business it impacts the commerce right so all these factors are beyond control of any organization whether it's a demographical factor whether it's an economic factors socio cultural factor political legal factors or natural factor any factor and these are known as the macro environment what is demographic factor people constitutes the market right what is market people customer satisfy the needs and wants of uh, customer target customer is marketing right so uh, what is uh, demographic environment demography demography is study of population people constitutes the market and study of population is known as demography marketers are interested uh, to uh, understand the changing composition of people in terms of size in ter uh, in terms of a uh, growth right growth in different region and in terms of uh, other factors that is age in terms of gender because all these factors impact the organization business these are the demographic environment when marketers study about the demography of the population when it study about the population population what study about the population means the size and the growth of the population what is the present size of the population or the target customer and what are the potential growth of that uh, target market right if there is a chance if there is chances of growth then only uh, it could benefit the company profit uh, company could earn the profits right so in terms of the size uh, then uh, in terms of the age right in terms of the gender in terms of the uh, growth in different regions so all these are the demographic environment we'll discuss about the demography in uh, uh, in this lecture later on when we'll discuss about the segmentation 
in detail. Economic environment. What is the economic environment? Economic environment. Uh, marketing. Marketing is understanding the needs and wants of the customer. Developing uh, the product according to the needs and uh, wants of the customer. Communicating it to the target customer and delivering that product in exchange. That is what is more. What is the important thing is exchange. Marketing is exchange. Marketing includes exchange. So economic environment plays an uh, uh, plays an uh, important role in marketing. See uh, what what a customer wants, what a customer desire, what are the needs of the customer could be many. But whether the customer is able or capable to purchase that product. What is the economic status of that customer? Economic status plays an important role. Maybe someone now needs BMW, but his or her economic status or economic condition is not like that, that he can purchase BMW. So uh, there is a, the, the exchange value is important, right? Exchange is important. Exchange process is important in marketing. So it is very important to understand the economic environment for the marketer, right? Uh, marketer uh, keep track uh, uh, track of uh, uh, purchasing capacity of the customer. What is the purchasing capacity of the customer? Maybe he needs or he wants your product, but not able, capable to purchase that product. His purchasing capacity is less could be less right the purchasing pattern and power of people depends on the on the factors such as the incomes savings inflation and availability of credit etc all these factors impact the marketing or the business of the organization how income if income is more see there is a uh, direct relationship between there is a relationship between the income and demand if income is more then demand could be more if people have purchasing capacity they have money in their hand they'll go to the market and will purchase the thing if they have savings their capacity the purchasing capacity will increase inflation impacts Inflation, uh, if there is an inflation in the market, purchasing capacity goes down, right? Availability of credit plays an important role. Suppose if you want to purchase a, a costly product and uh, if credit, uh, if uh, uh, companies are ready to give that product on the credit, right? Credit facility is there, then people prefer to buy that product because they have to pay uh, that in, uh, in forms of EMI. If I want to purchase a product of 1 lakh rupees rather than paying 1 lakh rupees at a, at one go, right, I can pay that in installments. So availability of credit facility is important and when economy uh, is doing well, then only companies are willing or ready to uh, provide that credit facility. And if credit facility is available, if credit facility is available this shows that economy is doing well right and because of this credit facilities customer can purchase the product so economic environment plays a very important role and the marketers keep eye on the economic conditions socio-cultural environment then again this is very important uh, it is composed of culture social class tradition beliefs values lifestyle of a people in a given society some of our cultural values are deep rooted and they are known as the core values they are known as the core values like um, uh, that one should educate the children this is our core value right this is our core value and it is very difficult to change the core values right the marketer tries to influence the secondary values there are some secondary values and um, it is easy to change those secondary values and marketers tries to influence those secondary values of their target customer to some extent through marketing efforts suppose our co core value is that uh, uh, we should educate our children but the secondary value could be uh, that uh, they should uh, get admission in uh, some international school. It is a secondary value. We can change it, right? If uh, better schools are available, uh, 
uh, and the school fee is less, then we can, uh, then people might move to some government schools or some public schools, right? So, uh, socio-cultural environment plays an important role. Like, uh, take an example of eateries, right? Uh, that uh, when um, say Domino's and uh, that Chinese food, the Chinese food they serve, uh, they change the taste of the food according to our social values, according to our taste, right? So they they made changes, they made changes in their food, right? In their product according to needs, wants, and taste of the customer, of the target customer. Right? So, uh, this socio cultural environment plays an important role. Right? Uh, because social class, class is an important concept, and every society is composed of classes. And uh, classes, classes is determined by the income, by their residential location, and type of occupation, and so on. Each class normally exhibits a specific pattern of behavior and lifestyle. So behavior specific, that is the income plays an important role or the residential or the status of an individual or the target customer plays an uh, this important role, right? Uh, it, uh, it shows the lifestyle and marketers try to influence their target market or choose their target market according to socio-cultural beliefs, right? Natural environment, natural environment impacts the business, no doubts. Uh, the environmental analysis must involve the study of natural resources, ecology and the climatic condition in a state where the company operates, right? Corporate environmentalism calls for integration of environmental issues into firms strategic marketing right you should take care where you are uh, where you are uh, thinking to establish your business or uh, where you are uh, thinking to uh, where you are uh, uh, as to where do you where you want to establish your business what are the whether the natural resources are present over there what is the climatic conditions what is the demand of the market what is the economic conditions of the market and is there any environmental issues can is can any environmental issues creep up there what are the laws for the environment in that state or the cities right will you be able to follow that how will you follow the laws of laws related to the environment of that state right so environmental natural environment plays an important role then the technological environment right technological has revolutionized the production process right use of raw material logistic transportation right information technology has a profound influence on the business firm and their final product so uh, you should be able to cop up with the technological with changing technological environment if you are able to uh, um, uh, cope up with the changing technological environment then only you can uh, survive in the market so technological environment plays an important role right it is a macro environment and it is beyond the control of any organization change in the technology suppose uh, technology has been changed and your competitor has adopted a new technology and he is producing the same product or the similar product not the same product the similar product at low low cost and the production cost is less than he can sell uh, that product at cost lower than the year product cost right and can earn profits people will prefer to purchase their product rather than the yours because of the price the, if the customer is price sensitive so technological environment plays an important role now the micro environment or internal environment micro environment or internal environment are that environment which is under the control of the organization right uh, these uh, environment constitutes of consumers companies who debate 
who devote the required effort to study the factors related to their customers better than their competitors would be more successful in achieving the marketing objectives. The first and foremost thing to be successful is to understand the needs and wants of the customers. If you are able to understand the needs and wants of the customer, then you can be successful. You can do better than your competitors, right? So it is very important that a company should understand what a target customer needs and what he wants. A company who can do this can survive and can compete in the market, right? Uh, some of the factors to be monitored are identifying the right customers in terms of need to be satisfied, their purchasing power, their buying behavior, brand switching behavior, etc. Uh, uh, first of all, important thing is identify the uh, target customer whom you want to cater, right? Whom you want to serve identify your target customer it is impossible next to impossible for any of the organization to target the uh, to uh, cater to the whole market so we always target the market right we always um, uh, find out the right customers whom we want to serve right uh, we first of all identify the target customer it could be on many bases when we'll discuss about the targeting, we'll discuss about uh, what is targeted, uh, targeting and how we do this. First of all, understand what is targeting, identify identification of the customer whom you want to serve, right? Identify the customer whom you want to serve, right? Then try to find out their needs, their wants what exactly they need what's exactly they want this uh, after reading their uh, needs and wants keep eye on their purchasing power right it is very important they might need hundred of things are they able to spend have the money to spend what is their purchasing power and then uh, have eye on their buying behavior and switching behavior. What is their buying behavior and their switching behavior? Uh, try to understand this thing and then try to develop the product according to the needs and wants of the customer by keeping all other factors in the mind that is their paying capacity, uh, their uh, switching uh, habits and their uh, buying behavior right next micro component is supplier apart from customer next is supplier supplier plays a key role in success of the business the task of supplying the right raw material of a good quality at right price and other inputs to the firm is of utmost importance which has a direct bearing on the marketing performance of a business so if you have a good supplier then only you can produce who can supply you a right raw material at right cost at right time then only you can produce a good product and can uh, meet the needs and wants of the customer right firms have to closely monitor the supplier environment as any change in the business practices of supplier has a serious implications so customer supplier the next component or the next uh, factor which influences which is uh, which is micro comes under the micro environment is competition you should have eye on your competitor right environmental analysis is incomplete without analyzing industrial level competition uh, never overlook your competitor always have eye on your competitor each industry has a different form from other in number of the firms the exist the type of product offered by the them the exit entry barriers government policies regulations which are specific to given industry everything is different industry competition analysis serve as a basis of strategic planning formulating and implementation keep eye on your uh, competition what they are uh, what they are uh, producing at what cost they are offering their product to the customer what are their um, weaknesses what are their uh, strengths right how can you compete with them and make the plans or the strategies accord keeping them in your mind and implement those strategies if you want to successful if you want to be a successful in that market market so uh, before introducing your product 
before producing your product it is very important to analyze the environment the macro environment as well as the micro environment macro environment is that environment which is beyond your control but micro environment is under your control you should have you should have thorough knowledge about both macro environment as well as micro environment after understanding your macro and micro environment the next come uh, the next thing which comes is the marketing research right marketing research what is marketing research it is related to gathering marketing information gathering information which is related to marketing marketing managers needs to analyze and seek more information in connection with macro environment factors which are relevant to the business or the firm it operates as well as he should be aware about the micro environment right macro that a business that marketing research includes the research it is the uh, gathering of the information which are which is related to the marketing the macro, when you are gathering the information of the macro environment that is about demography about the economic conditions about the technological conditions and about other things you are gathering the information so for a marketing uh, for a marketing manager it is important that should he should gather the information or he should have information about the macro environment as well as about the micro environment right okay the american marketing associations define marketing research as a systematic gathering recording and analyzing of data about a problem related to marketing of goods and services it is not only gathering the data but the systematic collection of the data right systematic gathering there is a that you should uh um, collect the data in a systematic way systematic gathering of the data then uh, recording that data analyzing that data and uh, data related to a problem of goods and services okay it is concerned marketing research is concerned with all aspects of the marketing whether it is related to the product design and development or whether it is related to the product mix whether it is related to the pricing whether it is related to the branding whether it is related to the packaging uh, sales performance or uh, distribution competition target customer and then a uh, buying behavior promotions and its impacts everywhere mr is concerned marketing research is concerned with each and every aspect of the marketing right right uh, from uh, gathering the information till till uh, the after sales services right till the feedback it is marketing research is is related to every aspect of the marketing the scope of mr includes the customers product distribution advertisement competition and external environment name a uh, name a uh, uh, process name an aspect of marketing or a business where mr is not included mr includes customers you gather the information about the customers then about the product distribution advertising competition and the external environment marketing research process uh, there are several steps of the marketing research process the first step is the problem definition anything which needs a solution is known as a problem a well defined problem is is the uh, is the way to get the solution if you have defined your problem well if you understood your problem well then only you can find the solution a well defined problem is half done type of a thing right define a problem uh, what is, what is your problem it means define your objective right what is uh, a marketing research it is systematic collection of the data for any of the problem that is what the definition of marketing research is now uh, systematic collection of the data for a 
problem for any specific problem what is problem first of all define the problem for which you want to collect the data suppose i want to find out the impact of advertisement on my sales right the problem is i want to find out whether my sales why whether the advertisement has created any impact on the sales whether the sales has been gone up because of my advertisement or not or i want to find out uh, whether my customer is price sensitive or not right whether my target market is price sensitive or not or my problem could be what are the needs and wants of the customers so that uh, so that i can develop my product according to the needs and wants of the customer there could be n number of problems define them properly a oh, well defined define the problem well that is first of all understand what the problem is for which you are looking for the solution right so problem definition after defining the problem of this comes the research design a research design research design includes many thing right in research design a research design includes the methods and the methodology uh, and the tools which you will apply to gather the data first of all define your population right define your population or uh, decide your segment or uh, your target market right decide your target market to whom you want to cater or to whom you want to serve right after deciding your uh, target market um or uh, disc uh, define the sample size because this is marketing research it is not at all possible to carry out the research on the whole population then you have to decide about the sample how will you collect how, how will you define this sample whether your sample will be a probable whether uh, which technique will you apply to uh, define this sample right whether you will uh, whether the sampling uh, technique will be probability uh, or will be a probable sampling or the non probable sampling what will be your sample size right uh, discuss all these things after defining your sampling sampling techniques uh discuss or define uh, the tools which you will apply to collect the data tools like whether you will collect the data through questionnaires whether you will conduct the interviews to conduct the data or whether you will apply an observation method to collect the data right so define the tools and then techniques after uh, this tools and they discuss define develop tools to collect the data all these are included in the research design then comes the field work after 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 uh, uh, finding out after discussing your target uh, your target consumer identify after identifying your target cu customers and your sample size and uh, you have developed your tools to collect the data now next comes as the field work go to field and collect the data through the tools it could be through observation method or research or interviews or through questionnaires or any other method which you would like to which you have, would have develop then field work collect the data right uh, collection of data after collecting the data go to the field a well defined field from where you want to collect the data field work means go to your identified customers uh, collect the data uh, give them the tools through uh, through the tools collect the data and then comes the data analysis after collecting the data tabulate that data properly in a proper format in a required format and uh, then apply various methods or techniques to analyze that data and if uh, there could be and you can apply any technique according to your objectives right apply the techniques and after applying the techniques you will get the results and then publish those results in form of reports 
right? Uh, we discussed about the report presentation uh, in our previous lectures when we were discussing about the research methodologies. You might be know, uh, knowing uh, well, report presentation, how to present uh, your uh, data in a report format. There are various, like, uh, first of all, uh, um, give the introduction about your topic and then discuss your objectives discuss about your research design right uh, then discuss uh, then um, discuss about your uh, data right the results discuss about your results which you get after analyzing your data and implement whatever you have what results you have got right so this is marketing research and marketing research is very very important it plays a very important role in marketing why because to understand the needs and wants of the customer marketing research has been conducted and if your product is according to if your product is able or capable to satisfy the needs and wants of the customer then only you can have advantage of over your competitors it is very important to understand there could be a number of products available in the market but uh, are they capable to satisfy the needs and wants of the customer maybe maybe a few products would be able to um, cater the needs of the customer but what about the price is your customer capable to purchase those product right are those product pocket friendly so uh, try to understand all these things and develop the product right according to needs wants and according to the purchasing capacity of their target market and then offer your product to the target market at right cost so that they can purchase your product and marketing research plays an important role in this to understand the needs, wants, purchasing capacity, the macro environment and the micro environment of the company, right? Now, very important topic that is market segmentation, targeting and positioning. What is market segmentation, right? See, the success of any product or brand in a competitive environment or the market environment can be conveniently attributed to the fact that the marketer had possibly segmented, targeted and positioned the firms offering in the right perspectives, STP. This is known as STP. STP is very important. If you really want to do well in the market, this STP is very important. That is S stand for the segmentation of the market then targeting of the market, targeting the customer and positioning your product to the marketing. This STP plays an important role and it to be successful in the market, it is responsibility of marketing uh, manager to understand and to do this STP well, right? To create a differentiation, marketer use segmentation, targeting and positioning strategy, right? This makes a differentiation. This is how you can differentiate from your competitors, right? Consumer buys benefits and products that best address to their specific needs. Segmenting the market, targeting the user and positioning the product or services offering are the three pillars of the modern marketing strategies. STP are the three pillars of the marketing strategies. Now, concept of segment. So see, these are the three pillars and these are very, very important in marketing, in modern marketing. Market segmentation refers to the subclasses of market reflecting subclasses of wants and the process of conceptually distinguished segment is known as market segmentation. Okay, see, uh, what market market is heterogeneous heterogeneous means the needs and wants of the customers could be different they are different right everyone wants needs uh, or needs something different right their needs their wants are different from each other right so market is heterogeneous segmentation and it is not possible for any any of the company or the organization to satisfy the needs and wants of the whole market full market 
right so what the market are do they divide the market or they uh, 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 they divide the heterogeneous market into homogeneous groups right suppose 100 take an example 100 people are there this is the whole market right at the 100 consumes constitutes the whole market now the needs and wants of 100 could be different from each other but but uh, say uh, the way you say the 10 the needs and wants of the 10 to 15 people are alike more somewhat alike right more or less they needs they want their needs their wants are alike the another 15 there could be they, their needs and wants could be same somewhat similar not same but somewhat similar and another 15 or 20 another 20 right their needs and wants could be somewhat similar so we can divide uh, this 100 into small small had to this 100 the if we see the 100 as an individual their needs and wants are different from each other so this is heterogeneous market right when we make a group the group of a people who have a similar needs not the same needs but similar needs if we divide them into the group of a people who have similar needs right that is when we divide uh, we make a group they have homogeneous needs their needs are homogeneous that is segmentation is dividing the heterogeneous or making a sub classes of heterogeneous market right or uh, into homogeneous group that is division of heterogeneous market into homogeneous group is known as segmentation right when we make the sub classes or homogeneous sub classes of heterogeneous market this is known as segmentation that is what is written in this slide market segments refers to the sub classes of the market reflecting sub classes of wants and the process of conceptually distinguish segment and this is known as market segmentation when you divide the heterogeneous market into small small groups right they have their needs are homogeneous somewhat homogeneous then this division of the heterogeneous market into small sub classes is known as market segmentation right division of heterogeneous market into homogeneous sub classes is known as market segmentation one will be able to distinguish one segment from the other on the basis of what segment members have in common in respect what they seek from a product right they have something in common they their needs their wants could be somewhat similar that is common right when we divide see when again i am repeating it when we divide a heterogeneous market into smaller small homogeneous sub classes or groups this is market segmentation right right in market segmentation the marketers divides a heterogeneous customer into a certain groups or segment each of which tends to be homogeneous in significant respect similar somewhat similar in the process of market segmentation it is the consumer or individual who are segmented and not the product or the price in this we are segmenting the customer right we are dividing the customer we are dividing on the basis of their needs and wants those who have uh, common needs or similar needs we divide them into groups right we make the groups of a people right those who have a similar or uh, significant similar needs what are the basis of segmentation there are certain basis of segmentation right uh, first is benefit segmentation the first basis benefit segmentation segment the market on the basis of what people see or benefits they see from the product right what benefits i want from that product maybe um, i or some other few others will uh, seek the same benefits then we can form a sub class of or a group because we have similar needs what what we are seeking the same type of a benefits or similar type of a benefits from the product so benefit segmentation that is uh, when people uh, uh, seeks the benefit from the product right then the geographical segmentation when market is divided on the basis of location 
right when we divide the market on the basis of location then that is known as geographical segmentation whether i want to uh, cater the eastern market west market south or see if my product is say um, uh say uh, i'm selling a coffee i'm a coffee seller right so uh, the best market for me could be the south india right because the south indians prefer um, coffee uh, rather than the north indians if if i have to sell the north indians prefer tea right so if i'm selling tea i'm a tea seller right then i uh, then uh, um pref uh, preferably i go to the north right so it depends it depends when we when we uh, market this segment on the basis of geography suppose um, my product is raincoat we have to sell that raincoat right or the umbrella right then uh, i I'll, i'll try to sell my product where Uh, where uh, the uh, where there are more rooms, right? Then demographic segmentation, right? Deg de de demographic segmentation is when marketers divide the potential customer on the basis of their demography. is demography demography as i told you earlier that is demographic is study of the population right so when i divide them on the basis of their age on the basis of their gender on the basis of their family size income occupation education location religion race nationality then that is demographic segmentation demographic segmentation uh, suppose um um uh, uh, my uh, my product is pen who needs pen or a pencil or a eraser students students needs pen pencils erasers so my Uh, i i divide the market or i segment the market on the basis of their age right ages say uh, from age group 2 to 19 20 20 21 they are my potential customers they'll purchase more pens or pencils or erasers right um, on the basis of gender Say for cosmetics, right? Cosmetic. A cosmetic company will divide the market on the basis of gender. If you are producing uh, some cosmetic goods, say creams or uh, lipsticks or any cosmetic good, uh, who will be your target customer? Then you will divide the market on the basis of gender, right? Family size. if your product is uh, um it depends on the family size then you will prefer to divide the market on the basis of the family size where family size is more if your product is like that where the family size is more where the family size is large right where the family size is large they will consume your product more right or where the family size is less maybe they will prefer your product because your product could be costly right so on the basis of family size when you divide the market then on the basis of income when you divide your uh, uh, this uh, market on the basis of income say banks or the credit card when they offer the credit card right uh, they offer you the credit limit or even the credit card on the basis of your income if you have if you have uh, of uh, if you comes under a certain range of the income your credit limit will be this or whether you will be uh, if you are uh, say if your uh, income is less than 1 lakh rupees we won't offer you they might not offer you the credit card and if your income is less if your income is say 1 lakh or more than 1 lakh then the credit limit comes right so that depends on your income what is your income level on the basis of income when you divide the market normally uh, these uh, 
credit facilities, right? Credit facilities depends on your income, right? You get the loan on the basis of your income, right? If your income falls under a certain range, you will, uh, you can avail the loan, a loan or the credit limit up to this limit, right? And then the education. When you divide your market on the basis of education, if your product is, uh, say for, um, if you are selling uh, books, right? You are a bookseller. Then you will divide the market on the basis of education. Location, religion, race and nationality could be other demographical factor on the basis of which the market divides the market. Then another segmentation could be on the basis of social class, right? Social class is defined uh, in terms of demographical varying from a single indicator like occupation to use the combination of factors like occupation, source of income, types of homes, residential area. So all these are social class. On the basis of class, on the basis of status, on the basis of your lifestyle, when you divide the on the basis of a class, it means you are dividing it on the basis of the income. You are dividing it, it on the basis of the residential area, right? Or the occupation. That is the social class. Then family life cycle, right? Other segmentation that draws a demographic family or demographic factor is family life cycle. Right? Uh, it could be the combination of age, marital status, age of the children. So, uh, because uh, the needs and wants varies according to the family life cycle. Then psychographic segmentation. What is psychographic segmentation? Psychographic is study of consumers primarily based on their activities, interest and opinions. Right? Right? So it drives the consumer's behavior. This includes the emotional responses, motivation, morale, ethical, and the political value, right? And then our division on the basis of the lifestyle on mode of living, right? So uh, uh, like uh, women's, uh, when uh, women's clothing, when you, uh, you segment the market on the basis of the uh, mode of living, right? That has been used by the um, marketers of the cars or the women's clothing or the cigarettes or the cosmetic or alcoholic beverages. Then the personality variables are there. Self-image even plays an important role uh, or important basis of your uh, segmentation of the market because it is related to the buyer's behavior right it uh, some marketers use this approach for their product with brand image that correspond to this self image of the consumer when you feel like this that this brand suits my image right that on the basis of the self image right okay then the usage rate sometimes you divide the market on the basis of the usage rate at what rate you use the product, right? Whether it is to define the heavy users, uh, whether uh, if you consume that product in a larger quantity or then you are a heavy user of that product or um, if you are occasionally using that product, right? Then on the basis of the brand loyalty, you, divide, you segment the market, right? Brand loyalty, the buyers can be divided into four groups according to the brand loyalty status. Hardcore loyals, those who always buys one brand, right? Softcore loyals who are loyal to two or three brands, right? And the shifting loyals, those who shift from one brand to another brand and the switcher who show no loyalty to any of the brands. So that depends whom you want to target. Right? So on the basis of this, you segment the market. Segmentation is division of a heterogeneous market into homogeneous subclasses is known as this. What is market targeting? What is targeting? That is a target is defined as a set of buyers sharing common needs or characteristics that a common decide to serve. Means these homogeneous groups are known as, homogeneous group is known as target. 
right so a target is defined as a set of buyers sharing common needs or characteristics that a company decides to serve right this second we have divided this and now we have decided whom which group or to which group we want to serve our product to which group we want to cater this is market targeting when you target 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 means aim when you aim a specific group or few groups to serve that is known as target market targeting understanding of a target market and measurement is their attractiveness is key decision in the marketing it is very important right uh, there are certain factors which one should consider that is the company thirst while well, segment the market firm needs to identify the requirement for the success of the target market size and growth of the potential of uh, size and uh, growth potential of the group or the target market what is the size of the target market is it substantial enough to serve the product or are what are the chances potential growth of that of that market of that target market whether it will grow or it will go down if it will go then it's it's good to serve the product to that market investment needed how much investment is required to aim to that target to trap that particular target right it is very important that uh, you should have thorough knowledge about the investment needed how much investment is required right then profitability it is important because you are doing a business to calculate one has to estimate both future sales and consist involved in the segment what would be the profitability of that segment if that if the potential growth is more than eventually we will earn more profit if growth if uh, growth uh, say potential growth is stagnant then we might not get the profits what are the risk risks are unavoidable the usual risk is uh, associated with the extent to which particular target market would respond what are all the risks and consider your competitor the selection of target market implies indirectly selecting your competitors with whom the company will compete when you are selecting a target market obviously competitors will be there so you are selecting your competitors understand your competitors understand their products understand do the swot analysis that is strength weakness opportunities and threat for you as well as try to understand the competitors strength and weaknesses right okay there are specific segment uh, that is uh, factors segment durability how durable that segment is mobility means um, mobil uh, mobility means uh, movement of in and out of a segment member of a target group when the people move from one group to another because of increase of the income or because of decrease in the income because of the age because of the gender when people move in and out of the group that is known as mobility consider this accessibility that is those in segment or target market should be directly reachable through established communication right okay how to evaluate and select the market segment that is the single segment concentration the firm markets to only one particular segment through this approach the firm wants to gain thorough understanding and needs of a segment to achieve a powerful market present uh, uh, presence uh, when you when you that is uh, how will you select a market segment uh, that it could be the single segment concentration i i concentrate on a single segment on a single group why why i will concentrate on a single group because i want to achieve a powerful market presence because uh, when i am concentrating on a single uh, group i can better understand their needs and wants and develop the product according to the needs and wants which meets their which can satisfy their needs and wants then selective specialization in this case the firm selects a subset of possible segments which are attractive and suitable means selective specialization um, selects a subset of all possible segments 
This strategy has merit of diversifying the firm's risk. The disadvantage of this approach is that may result in positive synergies, selective specialization. Then the product specialization, the company sells a particular product to the different customers, right? Uh, a laptop manufacturer is uh, supplying his product to the individuals, government, educational institution, and software companies. That is the product specialization when according to your product, uh, you are targeting your segments. It could be more than many, right? Then marketing, it could be according to market specialization, this approach of firm uh, attempts to focus and satisfy the varied needs of a specific group. For an instance, the uh, pharmaceutical company can sell an assortment of products meant for the surgeon or a hospital. Over dependence on a particular customer group implies a business risk. What is a product specialization? You have one product and then you are uh, trying to satisfy the needs of many groups according to the according to your product market specialization is when you have many product when you have an assortment of product what is assortment of product that is you when you have number of products that is the number of products you can offer to the seller to the customer right and to the customer that is when a company sells an assortment of product right uh, to specific segment then that is known as market specialization right focus to satisfy the varied needs of a specific segment and uh, then when you are uh, offering a product mix or an assortment of a product to a specific segment right then that is known as market specialization full coverage market many large firms attempt to serve all customers by offering different products Right? That is when one wants to cover the whole market by offering a different products. Undifferentiated marketing is undifferentiated marketing. The marketer ignores the differences among the segments and targets and, and, uh, and treat the entire market with a single offer. That is undifferentiated marketing. Right? And the firm develops a marketing program for a single product and attempts to sell to the largest number of customers through mass production or mass distribution and mass differentiated marketing when a company sells a different product to different segment of the market right like uh, when a company sells a bathing soap and they divide the groups into different customer groups right then this is known as differentiated marketing undifferentiated marketing when you sell your product to all without differentiating uh, the market or without segmentation of marketing differentiated marketing is when you uh, sell the different product to the different segment of the marketing so was bathing soap uh, lux dove that is that you offer as a beauty soaps and life boy uh, and okay and rexona they they are for the masses right and then marketing market positioning we understand segmentation target now next is positioning what is positioning once the market has been segmented that once the market has been divided and attractive segment have been identified whom you want to target right the next task is work within the target segment is to position your product offering in the minds of the customers or the consumer for adoption and derive customer satisfaction you have segmented the market, you have identified the uh, target market, right? Now, what next is to uh, offer your product to the target market, that is position the product offering to tell your mar target market that we are there, our product is there to meet the needs and wants of your, meet, to meet your needs and wants right that is position the product offering in the minds of the consumer for adoption and derive customer satisfaction right that is product price positioning is creation of a clear image in the minds of the consumer within the target segment 
about the nature of the product, the benefit to be gained from purchasing the product. Positioning in conveys information about the product back to the segment for which they are appropriate. So what is product positioning? When you create a clear image of your product, the benefits which a consumer can get from that product or what a, a consumer within the target market, when you uh, uh, Mm -hmm. That is positioning is the creation of the image in the mind of the target market, um, target consumer, right? When you tell the target consumer that our product is uh, our product is there uh, and is what are the um, uh, USP of your product and that product can meet the needs and wants of the consumer. Right, that is known as product positioning. Right, when you give information of your product to the consumer, uh, we position the product in many ways. Advertising plays an important role in positioning. Sales promotion plays an important role in positioning of a product. Right, so positioning is when you convey to the consumer that a product, that our product can uh, satisfy your needs and uh, wants better than anyone else product, right? Now, uh, uh, there are certain themes you have to decide on which theme you will position your product. Some themes on which brands position can be based are like positioning against the competitors. Uh, when you position your product, when you, conf uh, when you convey the information of your product against the competitor's product, that how your product is better than your competitor's product. Uh, although competitor's product is there, but R is better than this. What are the specific um, um, characteristics of our product and how is it, it is better? What is the USP of your product? Why should a consumer buy my product over my competitor's product? That is when you position against your competitors, you uh, tell them that my product, how your product is different from your competitor's product. Positioning on the customer desires or the other thing is that is how it meets the needs and wants of the consumer. Right? That is on the customer desire. Positioning on the product's performance or the quality. The quality of your product is better than anyone else's quality or positioning on the price. If your consumer or the target market is price sensitive, then you can position your uh, product on the basis of price that our uh, product is cheaper than anyone else's. Or, or if you are positioning it on the basis of quality, although our product is um, a little bit um, cost more, but the quality of our product is better than anyone else, right? So positioning against the competitor's project is both implicit and explicit positioning is there, right? Uh, in, in implicit uh, positioning, the attribute comparison shown by the cars, which highlights their own feature without naming the competitors, and in explicit positioning, you name the competitors. You compare your product directly with your competitor's product, right? So um, that's all for today, right? Thank you very much. Namaskar.